Father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. He got into his right mind. He realized what he was involved in was destroying him, and he had a better life waiting for him. He now is at a point where he can make a decision of which way he wants to go and what he wants to do. And God can make it real obvious to you that I'm going to choose the Lord because I'm getting killed in the other way. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy highest servants. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. You know, it's nothing about like compassion of the Lord, love of the Lord. I'll never forget the night I had to come back to this church on the backs of my sons, out of my mind. Where I'm crying like a madman. But God, who was merciful, he had somebody that had been delivered and had the spirit of the living God and could show the love of God. He said, I've been waiting for you for a long time. He's glad to see you. Come on in. Put him over there. You know, and I, I tell you, I just thank God. Nothing like having someone that knows the power of God and has the love of Christ in their life. And is able to extend that to a, a beaten down soul. Because that's what happens to each and every one of us. We need, we, we need all kinds of stuff after the enemies to get through with us. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Bring and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. You know, there's something about God. He, he, he can fix you up after the devil and beat you after that. You know, I can't thank him enough. I, I see why he's just said, come unto me. He's come unto me. All he that lay with every. I'm looking at things now and how he's just pouring out blessings. So if somebody comes, whatever they need, it's available to them because it's going to be used the way the Lord wants it used what, to help them in what they need. You know, it's a blessing. The Lord touched our dear sister's heart to bless the church that the church could bless other people. No matter what, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning about God. I'm learning he'll supply all, not some of your needs, spiritual, physical, mental, financial, all your needs according to his riches and glory. He'll make a way out of nowhere. Yes, Lord. For this my son verse 24, for this my oh, and let's go to Let's go 22. But the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe, put it on him, put a, and put a ring on his hands and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to make merry. You know, the Lord is able to help you Get joy and peace in whatever situation you might be in if you just hold on to Jesus. Let's go to John 5th chapter. And I want to start at the 18th verse. That's John the 5th to the 18th verse. And therefore the Jews sought more to kill him because not only he had broken the Sabbath, but also that God was his father making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For whatsoever things he doeth, these things also the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. 
For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Ain't you glad you got quickened by Jesus? I tell you, I'm so grateful to him that he gave me a, a new life, a more abundant life, and give me a spirit that I can have some peace, love, and joy down here where there's so much sorrow and sadness and so many things going on. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. And he that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed unto life. It's that more abundant life that only he can provide for us in his power and his spirit and his love. Let's go to Romans 8th chapter. <clears throat> Romans 8th chapter. There, first verse. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, if you know and have accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, and you know and believe he is in your life, when this flesh acts up and acts out, you can repent and ask him for forgiveness, ask him to deliver you from that, ask you to purge you from that, and he has the power to change you. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You are covered in his blood. And you know what? God don't even see you. He see Jesus. And everything that Jesus has put himself on, his blood, he has the power to make it what he wants it to be, which is acceptable to his Father in him. He will make us the way he wants us to be. Therefore, brother, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. We do not have to be bound to the things of the flesh. We do not have to be bound to the things, things of this world. The earth man is earthy. And he is bound to the earth. But the heavenly man is heavenly. And he is attached to his heavenly father through Jesus Christ and all his blessings. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Jesus came with the answer, the eradication of sin in man's life. He came to deliver man from the bondage of sin and death and the disobedience that he, we were born into by being born in sin and shaped in iniquity, to come into the spiritual relationship of our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ that we could live through His Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. God can change your mind. God can give you a new mind. It says that we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is the only mind that can obey God. Because if we be renewed in the things of the Lord and his spirit grows in us and takes over our lives, he is able to focus on the things that are above. He says, seek ye the things that are from above. We're, we're Christ sits on the right. Set your affections on thing of, things above. We're, does Christ sits on the right hand of the Father. That's where he wants our minds to be. Our minds can't get there. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It does not like God. But the mind of Christ loves God because it can obey God, and it starts to see the blessings of serving God. 
and starts to thank God for him being in our lives. For the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the flesh. Of not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You cannot get to the point of trusting God in reality until you come into a place that you can believe him and receive the mind of Christ by trusting him in everything that he does and says. That means you don't look on what the world and what's happening to you in the flesh. I look at the news because I want to see what God's doing. Because see, he just ain't working around in America. God, he, the God we serve is a worldwide God. And his main focus is a place called Jerusalem. That's where, that's his nation right there. That's his nation. And that's what he is going to focus on. And all, a lot, all the prophecies are centered right on that place. And we can see them coming to pass. They come to pass. Very obvious. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse number 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brother, we are not debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. You do not have to live after the bondage of sin and iniquity that is raging all around you. For if you live, verse 13, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For if they have not, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's, that's, that's an affectionate term in, in the Arabic language, the Arabic language, that is the same as us calling someone daddy, calling someone daddy. And can everybody please put your phones on mute? Can, can everyone please put your phones on mute? Greatly appreciate it. I should have said that before I got started, but I was so excited. Please put your phones on mute. Can everyone please put their phones on mute? Thank you. Please put your phones on mute. Deeply appreciate it. But we can hear your little conversations going on behind. And it, 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 it makes it difficult in the church. Thank you, guys. Verse 13, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Please, everyone, please, everyone, put your phones on mute. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if through the Spirit you mortify the deeds of your body, you shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy. You know, we, you know, we, we come, we, we get close to God and really 
start to feel his presence and his love in our lives. The spirit itself bears witness of our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. It's already there. It's like that old saying, a, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. A blessing in the spirit of the Lord is an even worse thing to waste because he's given us everything that we need to, to have a relationship with God personally. See, this ain't, this ain't group therapy. This ain't, this ain't we coming in this all one time and everybody coming in. This is every man for himself. You got to seek God for this. You got to trust God for this. You got to believe God for this so God can give it to you. And he will show you he's with you by what he does for you. Let's go to Galatians, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to turn you loose after this. Praise God. I know you sat through a lot. But see, his word is powerful. His word is true. His word, his word can do everything he said if you can believe. That's come Jesus always said, do you believe I am here? Do you believe I can do this? If you can believe, he can do it. Now that's Galatians 4, chapter, first verse. And it says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors, and governors until the appointed time of the Father. How many remember Brother Tyrone Minister? Oh, yeah. He, oh, them tutors and them governors that, 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 that was working on us to drive us to God, to open up the truth to us about God. <clears throat> Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, under all those things that the world had. We were bound to them. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of woman, made under the law, to redeem them that are under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons, our heavenly father, claiming us. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature were no gods. But now, after ye have known God, or rather known of God, and that's the important thing. See, it's one thing to say, you know, yeah, a lot of people, I know God, I know God, I know God. But the main thing is God know you. God know you, guess what? Stuff happens in your life that you can glorify him and praise him about and thank him about for doing what nobody else but God has done. But now after you've known God or rather known of God, you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements where under, yes, you were under bond, a desire again to be under bondage. God set you free from all the elements and all the wickedness and all the sins and all the sorrows and all the things, things that are in this world. You know, you don't have to be hooked up again with them anymore. You know, the world look at you and think you're cruel. Brother Will used to call them the bleeding hearts. You know, you see somebody going through something and, you know, you know, it's just so sad to see it. It's sad to see it. But just tell them what Jesus did for you. We got testimonies all over this place. But Paul, you, you all, you've been off drugs since 1988. Nobody take you off drugs with Jesus. That's a testimony for his glory. And whatever he broke in our lives. And the reason he breaks it is one reason. To make us acceptable to him. But if you ain't, I don't care if you ain't never did nothing but told a white lie. If you ain't acceptable to God, you ain't getting in his kingdom. And you ain't getting blessed. So it ain't about what you're in. It's about who's in it. He got the power to bring you out. And if you can really, really trust him and believe that he can work everything out. Amen. 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 Thank God for this Father's Day. And thank God for our Heavenly Father that Jesus made it possible 
to come into our lives and to be a blessing to each and every one of us. Brother Dow, are you still on the line? Will you close us out with a word of prayer, please?
Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your everything. Amen. 